As a matter of fact, it is. He is lucky to be alive now. Right, but... Lower your voice, Ash. Uh, Foxy and Kylie stand in a window at the top of a tree. They smoke pipes. Fox looks off into the distance, says mysteriously. Who am I, Kylie? Who now? What now? Why a fox? Why not a horse or a beetle or a bald eagle? I'm just saying this more like existentialism, you know. Who am I? And how can a fox ever be happy without, forgive the ex expression, a chicken in its teeth? I don't know what you're talking about, but it sounds illegal. Here, put this bandit hat on. Maybe you're a medium. Take it off now and don't wear it around the house. And so it begins. Uh, an elementary school science lab located in the lowest tier of the large bramble. Ash works on a chemistry experiment alongside his lab partner. She is a yellow fox with a white spot, just a little bit taller than Ash. And she wears a beige dress with flowers on it and berets in her, in her fur. She is Agnes. They both have protective glasses on. There is a, ra a rack of uh, uh, vials and beakers in front of them filled with substances of every area. Agnes stares intently across the room while Ash mixes chemicals. Magnesium. Magnesium. Sorry? Hey, Ben. Hey, Ben. Sorry? Potassium tri... What are you looking at, Agnes? Ash leans in front of Agnes to see what she's looking at. His heart sinks. Oh, no. Christopherson tinkers with the Bunsen burner at a low uh, flame, pleasant, uh, smiling pleasantly at Agnes. An overgrown hunking beaver uh, wearing part of a football uniform comes over and slams a shoebox of rocks on the table. Why is your cousin's... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Why is your cousin such a what sandwich? I beg your pardon. What does that mean? It means I didn't understand what you just said. A wet sandwich? Yeah, a wet sandwich. He's too short. He dresses like a girl. He's different. Are you a bully? You're starting to sound like a bully. Watch this. Beaver Sun sticks the end of the wire into the flame of the Bunsen burner. It sparks with a white. A uh, burst of white, he jams it into the beaker, which explodes, covering Christopherson and Beaver's son with silver powder. You just destroyed the whole experiment. Better extinguish this magnesium. Christopherson leans down under the lab table and comes up with a fire extinguisher. Stand back. Christopherson sprays the burning textbooks with a fire extinguisher. Agnes looks at Christopherson. I like your ears. Thank you. I like your spots. Really? I used to cover them up. Christopher and Agnes both laughed quietly, looking at each other for a curious moment. You're supposed to be my lab partner. I am. No, you're not. You're disloyal. Fox's study, a map of the valley with notes and arrows written all over it, is spread across the desk. The door is closed with a towel jammed under it. Fox sits in his armchair. Kylie sits in a creaking rocking chair. I used to do this professionally, and I was very successful at it. I had to get out of it for personal reasons, but I've decided to secretly do one last big job on the sly. I'm bringing you in as my secretary and personal assistant. Okay. This is actually kind of a big deal, so just, don't just say, okay. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm going to make a tape of this for my record, so don't make a lot of noise. That means stop rocking. Okay. Master plan. Phase one, side A. We'll start with Bogus chicken house. Number one, his only security is a few old hunting beagles and a low stone wall. Now, word about beagles. Never look a beagle directly in the eye, and if you... Why not? I mean, 
Beagles aren't so tough. Yeah, well, first of all, one of these beagles has chronic rabies, which he had, which he's on medication for. And if you get bit by them, you have to get shots in your stomach for six months. And second, uh, listen, I'm not going to justify this. Just pay attention and stop interrupting. I'm taping this. I pick uh, some blueberries, Butterfield, and them with uh, scalpel and lace them each with 10 milligrams of high potent sleeping powder, enough to tranquilize a gorilla. Uh. How do we make them eat it? Eagles love blueberries. Remember, they aren't very smart, but they are incredibly paranoid. So always kill a chicken in one bite. One bite. Get it? Are you listening to me? I look into your eyes and I can't tell whether you're getting anything I'm saying. Ash lies in the top bunk. Christopherson stands over a low table with a model high-speed train on it. Do you mind if I slide my bedroll slightly out from under the train set? It's hard to sleep in that corkscrew, corkscrew position. There's a lot of attitudes going on around here. Don't let me get one. No, it's only just my spinal cord is getting. Sleep wherever you want, pal. Here, take my bed. I'll just crawl under the bookcase. Who cares if I get splinters in my ears? Never mind. You're going to pout about it? Because I've had it up to here with that sad house guest routine. Christopherson stares at Ash. Ash stares back at him. Christopherson sighs. Good night. Christopherson crawls under the low table. He begins to cry quietly. Ash listens, uneasy and concerned. He climbs down the ladder of his bunk. He looks under the table. He kneels in front of the train set and presses a button. A tiny bell begins to ring and a miniature bridge lowers. Christopherson sadly crawls back, back under the table and kneels next to Ash. They watch together as the train pulls out of the station and begins to circle its track. Fox and, Fox and Kylie move swiftly through the tall grass. Fox pauses to sniff the air. All right, a few beagles, as we discussed, but we're ready for that. You feel that? The wind's in our faces. Uh, yeah, you know, back in the old days, didn't they used to do that thing where if somebody saw a wolf and... Uh, what, they... what, what, wolf, wolf? Oh, never mind. All right, here comes the low stone wall. Not a problem. This is a chain link thing, fence, I guess. I... Did I not remember this? Maybe it's new. Let's pause. What the cuss is this? Where'd this giant fence come from? We had a master plan. What's this lightning bolt stand for? That, I guess hypothetically, could mean maybe this fence might be electric. Oh, well, I just hope it doesn't mean thinner. I have a phobia of that. Fox and Kylie climb a tree, crouch at the end of its branch. Foxy produces a Ziploc bag filled with blueberries with uh, white thread stitched uh, uh, into them. Watch this. Fox pulls out a blueberry into the end of the straw and shoots it into the barnyard. Uh, the blueberry lands in the front of uh, the chicken house. A beagle approaches it, sniffs it, eats it. He looks very pleased, falls over out cold. Foxy, with an ecstatic expression on his face, whistles sharply with a half chirp and makes his uh, obscure hand signal. Oh. Beagle, beagles love blueberries. Didn't I tell you the master plan's working again? All right, this is a tricky part. One of us has got to jump that barbed wire, slide under the tire spikes, and flip open the fence latch. Who's it going to be? Not me. Uh, you know who could probably do this part easily? Christopherson. The kid's like professional, Olympic level. Oh, why don't we go that way? There's no obstacles. Yeah, that's better. Uh, Foxy and Kylie race through the gap at the end of the tangle uh, chain with barbed wire. They dart up the door uh, marked as chicken house number one, flip the latch and duck inside. There's a, an eruption of squawking, screaming and fighting. The chicken house door swings open again and Foxy and Kylie emerge among the clouds of feathers. Uh, Fox, Fox is carrying five dead chickens and Kylie has one live. I said one bite, cuss it. I'm trying. I have a different kind of teeth from you. I'm an opossum. Oh, Kylie tries to bite the chicken's neck. The chicken is unharmed. Kylie shrugs. Foxy kills the chicken in one quick flick of the jaw. That's so grisly. There's blood in everything. We're killing chickens. They're going... There's going to be blood in this story. Follow me. 
Foxy and Kylie dash for the electric fence. They stop in front of it. Kylie looks at Fox. What's the master escape plan? Foxy hides confused, gunshot, uh, gunshot fire among the chicken houses. Foxy shouts to Kylie, follow me again. Fox and Kylie run across the barnyard past the beagles, and as they begin to wake up, uh, wake up and stagger around, farmhands appear, loaded guns, uh, running with confusion. Uh, Fox and Kylie race by unnoticed among them. They dart into the house, in through the flap into the back door. The lights are out of the chick, uh, of the kitchen. They take a moment, breathing hard in the darkness. Kylie shakes his head in disbelief. Wow, that was amazing! How did we do that? We ran the other way, or something? Yeah. What happens now? No idea. Fox opens the door flap a crack. He looks out and sees Bogus opening the front gate to let his beagles out, farmhands barking and shooting as they search for the intruder. Holy cuss, they open the gate. Uh, follow me again. Lightning quick, Foxy and Kylie burst through the open door, door flap, race across the barnyard and dart through the gate. Up the road, Bogus screams furiously as he runs with his pack of beagles and farmhands. Foxy and Kylie fly into the bushes as they race under the through the underbrush, Fox says, all right, let's hit the five and dime on the way back. We need to make some fake uh, price tags and wrap these chickens in wax paper. So so it looks like we got them from the butcher shop. Mrs. Uh, next morning, Mrs. Fox studies a, a crayon price tag labeled uh, uh, $4 attached to the wax paper uh, par wrap parcel. She opens the parcel, holds up a dead chicken and a leg. There's a small metal clip around its ankle. She examines it. Where'd you get this chicken? I picked it up at the Five and Dime last night on my way back from... Uh, got a Bogus Farms tag around its ankle. Must have escaped there before I bought it. Psst. It's Bunce tonight. He's got a refrigerator smoke, smokehouse with... Uh, Kylie? <laughs> You're muted. Sorry. I thought you said we were only doing one last job. We are, but it's not done yet. It's a triple header. Uh, Quinn, page uh, 28, please. Uh, uh, hi. Christopherson stands there next to a white feral dress in a polyester foot football coaching shorts and a shirt that says sand dogs on it. He's a very muscular arms and wears a whistle around his neck and a baseball cap. He is coach Skip. Coach, we don't have, we, we don't have black bat where, where I'm from. What are the rules? That's you, Janet. I know, hold on, sorry. That's okay. It's, it's okay. <laughs> that always happens, like about my Charles and my page is gone. Uh, Page 29. 29? Yeah. Sorry, what was the last line? Uh, Christopherson saying, what are the rules? What are the rules? It says 28 on mine. Yes. Uh, 28, 29 on the actual. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, there's no whack bat on the other side of the river. No, we mostly just run grass sprints or play acorns. Hmm. Well, it's real simple. Basically, there's three grabbers, three taggers, five twig runners, and the player at whack bat. Center tagger lights the pine cone and checks it over the basket, and the whack batter tries to hit the cedar stick off the cross rock. <laughs> then the twig runners dash back and forth until the pine cone burns out, and the umpire calls pop box. Finally, at the end, you count up however many score downs it adds up to and divide that by nine. Got it. Go in for Ash. Substitution. Ash, come out. You need a breather. I still feel good, coach. Let me finish this eighth. No, come on, step out. Let's go. Am I getting better, coach? Well... You sure as cuss not getting any worse. Really? You think I could end up being as good as my dad if I keep practicing? Your dad? Huh. Your dad was probably the best whack bat player we ever had in this school. You don't want to compare yourself to that, do you? Yeah, but I think I have some of the same raw natural talent, don't you? You're improving. 
let's put 